What if there is no there, there's only here? What if, when it's your time to leave, you discover that there's nowhere to go? And above all, what if it turns out you are the thing that you seek? In our puzzling world, where life force and self-worth are usually pegged to the almighty dollar, one man threw his last three and a half rupees into the river, never to touch money again for the next 54 years. Never has there been a life more pure, more serene or more giving than that of today's master. In today's Masters episode, we're having tea with Raman Maharishi. Hi everyone, welcome back to Vedic Life Coaching. Thank you so much for joining me and welcome back to the Masters series. Today we're having tea, I'm having a glass of water with Raman Maharishi. Now I pronounce it Raman Maharishi because that's how my mum pronounces it. And she has told me many stories of this incredible being across the course of my lifetime actually and I've also heard about him through stories by Ramdas and Ramdas of course would say Ramana Maharshi and for quite a while I used to think is he talking about the same person that my mom talks about I don't know and then I discovered yeah it is the same person so Ramana Maharshi is how he would say it and my mom says Raman Maharishi, same person. <laughs> but I've been studying him lately and it has been such a joy to study this incredible being, to spend time with, with someone who is so present here on this earth, incredibly present, unlike anyone else really. And in the introduction that I've put together, I'm kind of in a, in a subtle way trying to capture some of what he was about. And one of the things he did teach us was about this concept of reincarnation. And in my intro, you'll notice that I say things like, you know, there's no there, there's only here. You know, when we die, where do we go? Does it turn out that, that we're just here? All this kind of thing. And I hope that doesn't alarm anyone because some people have ideas that well I want to go places you know I want to meet my my mom or dad or grandparents or whoever it is right you, you want to meet your people and you want to go to Shivlok and all this kind of thing <laughs> right so I know all about this but you see I think one of the teachings of Raman Maharishi is that that's I think all of that is, is part of the dream and he wants us to identify with the dreamer. So it's like when you're lying flat at night, you're having dream after dream after dream. So that's like incarnation after incarnation after incarnation. And then all these different places, all these different people that you were, but yet the whole time you were lying in your bed. There wasn't anywhere else that you were. Right? You were just there the whole time. And that was really the concept that I was wanting to get across in my introduction. <clears throat> I'll give you a quote by Raman Maharishi. He says, Reincarnation exists only so long as there is ignorance. There is really no reincarnation at all, either now or before, nor will there be any hereafter. This is the truth. And yeah, I will leave you to study his teachings in more depth. But why don't we take a look at his charts? I've got my usual two page script here on the iPad, which I'm going to read out and I'll put charts by my side so that you can see what I'm talking about. I apologize in advance for my unusual intro. 
it is going to be a bit weird but bear with me this will all make sense now imagine if you will a hollywood film star someone like audrey hepburn now picture miss hepburn wearing an outfit that looks something like a potato sack fashioned out of some nondescript brown hessian with little styling in the stitching if i described only the outfit you would have no clue about the stunning woman that lies inside. In a similar way, reading the chart of an advanced being like Raman Maharishi is like getting an understanding only of the outfit, leaving us to wonder about the splendors lying within. Spiritual sages, saints and prophets are like this. They are hard to read as they renounce much of what makes an individual unique in an earthly sense, including any material attributes conferred by starlight. But what can we say as we look at the charts of this timeless being? Well, balance is a major theme in all of Raman Maharishi's charts. A Libra ascendant can be found in a jaw-dropping seven Varga charts including D1, D9, and D10, which is pretty amazing. I rarely see that. Making it a great case of Lagna Vargotama across the board. Frequently, we see Mars being lauded by a feminine ruler, which to me signifies an extraordinary balance, even a mastery of male and female energies. It's really showing us a sublime blend of the states of doing and being. In Raman Maharishi's chart, it's as if the universe challenged Mars to see if he'd be able to rest. Rising to the challenge, Mars proves that he can relax harder than anyone, including Venus. In fact, Mars does so in full view of everyone too, right in the seventh house of public, the house of the other. There he sits in Barani Nakshatra, lauded by Venus, he is also conjunct Neptune, which no doubt had an additional softening effect on any of Mars's strong desires. When Raman Maharishi left home, he did so aged only 17 years, in 1896. When he was 16 years of age, a time when most of us are worried about exams or the blemishes on our faces, Raman Maharishi was reading about poet saints who were devoted to Lord Shiva and how divine union is a possibility even here on earth. He had an electrifying experience where a force overtook him. Similar to the mystical experiences described by both Eckhart Tolle and Byron Katie, as well as people like Lester Levinson, Dr. David Hawkins, there are many. After this experience, he lost all interest in everyday life and by the 1st of September in 1896, he had left his home by escaping abruptly, telling his brother he needed to attend a class at school. He disappeared into the temples of Tiruvannamalai, Tiruvannamalai, where he was so absorbed in divine bliss that maggots and bugs would feast on his living flesh. If we look astrologically, we see Saturn passing through the house of his natal ascendant. So an event can materialize here that has the power to change the course of a person's path during the years 1894 to 1896. He was running Saturn Sandasha at the time. And so we see that his natal sun and Rahu were both active. Sun, Saturn and Rahu are all in Jupiterian houses. It's no wonder he had such a strong impulse to get away from it all. Travel is definitely indicated in this chart. And while Raman Maharishi really only made that one big journey at a young age within his country of origin, he traversed the dimensions of consciousness more than most of us can hope to do in one lifetime. While the third house represents short distance travel, according to the teachings of B.V. Raman, it also represents our mind which is where Raman Maharishi's leaps and bounds were silently made. Lakshmi, Raman Maharishi's beloved cow, can also be seen from this chart. 
To me, Saturn is representative of Lakshmi, seated in the sixth house of pets, and more so as it's in Revati Nakshatra. It's widely known that Lakshmi was a supernatural being, quite like Raman Maharishi himself. She died in his lap, and many around them had a deep knowing that this would be her last incarnation ever. Revati being the last of the nakshatras, and Saturn being the last of the planets that can be seen with the naked eye, shows us that she had clearly worked her way through the entire astrological wheel. In this magnificent final performance, there would be no encore. From this chart, we can also clearly see that this person would have a special bond with his mother. Ketu conjunct the moon indicates one may have shared many past lifetimes with the person who incarnates as one's mother in this lifetime. When Saturn was passing over the moon, so the height of Sarisati period, she moved to Raman Maharishi's place in Arunchala, where he proceeded to give her finely tuned instruction. Taking up the life of a renunciate, she lived with him until her death in 1922. We can see this event clearly in Raman Maharishi's chart. She left while Saturn was fourth from his moon, the house of the mother, and twelfth from the ascendant, the house of loss. My cliched ending, as with any master, there's always so much more to say, doesn't seem to fit in this script. Raman Maharishi himself was a man of very few words, despite having gifts for writing and artistry in speech. However, to end this piece, I'm sure he wouldn't mind my appreciating the world around him in the 1950s, just before he left. In photographic terms, the universe had set up a magnificent scene. There was exactly the right amount of contrast, of highlights and shadows, that enabled the illumination of a light that will never shine the same way ever again. So I hope you liked my overview of Raman Maharishi. There is more to say. If you are quite the student of astrology, you might want to take a look at his D9 chart. You will see a stunning Valaki Yoga, which I could go into, but I'm pressed for time. I definitely am, yeah, time is moving on. But there's also the D20 chart uh, that, that you could study as well. So the D9, the Valaki Yoga there is stunning. And the D20 chart has an incredible exchange between his fourth and 11th houses, which shows a wish fulfillment for his mother. And that's really worth taking a look at as well. But guys, I'm gonna leave you with some beautiful music by an incredible young Indian musician who's done a really wonderful cover of Ed Sheeran's Shape of You. And I just thought the song Shape of You is cool for Raman Maharishi because that's what we had. You know, we didn't have too many words or too many teachings or we had his being, you know, and that's what I'm hoping gets expressed through this really upbeat music. And I'll also leave you with some footage of the mountain that Raman Maharishi believed was Lord Shiva. He believed that this, this mountain was basically Lord Shiva. Isn't that incredible? And I think he would walk around it once each day. And now people do that as a pilgrimage. They go there and, and they, they walk around. Eckhart Tolle did that. He walked around the mountain. I want to do that one day. Who knows when I may get the chance. Might be some years away, but I want to go there. So yeah, and I'll also leave you with some photos of the beautiful cow, Lakshmi, who stories of her are just breathtaking. She sounds incredibly divine, this really special being. She, you know, the stories of her, yeah, make it even seem like she, she had quite the magnificent personality as well, you know. So I'll leave you with some pictures of those two together. but. I want to thank you so much for tuning in and I look forward to seeing you next time.